Greetings Oracle Database fans, this is Justin and in this Oracle Database YouTube video tutorial I'm going to show you how to run SQL plus commands and SQL commands in what's called batch mode. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there are two modes to run commands in SQL plus. You can run them in interactive mode or batch mode. Interactive mode uh, means that you enter the commands one by one as an SQL prompt and you wait for the response and you react to that response from SQL. Um, in batch mode, it means that you can put multiple commands in a, in a, in a, in a file on your hard disk that's um, accessible through your operating system and you can call the commands within a file at any time. Okay, This is what we call reusable code. It's also what we call anonymous in the in the PLSQL world anonymous PLSQL code because it's not named. Okay, it's 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 in the operating system. It's external from the from the database and external from SQL plus. Okay, a good example would be is let's say you had to issue a command or a group of command or numerous commands every day on a daily basis or very frequently. Okay, it'd be very annoying to type it in all the time, especially if it's multiple lines or multiple commands. Okay. Um, so it would be nice to just put those commands into a file and then reference that file in SQL Plus, and SQL Plus will then open that file and execute all the commands which are in that file. This is how you do that. So let's go ahead and set our Oracle, our variable Oracle SID to finance. Um, this is an 11G release 2 database running on a uh, Windows uh, Vista Lenovo laptop. We ensure our Oracle SID variable is set properly which it is finance and we connect to our finance database via SQL plus connected we do a show user to ensure connected as sysdba and we do a select name from v dollar sign database to ensure we're connected to finance database which we are finance okay so let's say that these two commands which are SQL plus commands show user and select name from v dollar sign database let's say that we needed to execute them on a daily basis for whatever reason okay now you could come in every day and type in show user select name from v dollar sign database or you could just you could just tell sql plus to open a file and execute what's in that file and in that file you could put the show user and select name from v dollar sign database commands so let's do that now so you can see we are under what's called the root of c c colon slash um, on our operating system. So let's go ahead in this directory and let's create a file called script1.sql with a notepad utility, which is our Windows editor. So notepad space script1.sql like so. Okay, and <coughs> we open up a blank file in our notepad session. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to simply type in the SQL plus and or SQL commands, which I want to execute and I type them in the same way I would interactively in SQL plus the only difference is in batch in batch mode I'm only entering them once in the script and I'm going to call this script every time I want to execute these commands I'll show you in a second so I type in show user semicolon and I type in select name from the dollar sign database semicolon on the next line I save the file and exit the editor uh, we ensure that we have a file called script1.sql and we use the type command to view the contents of this file, script1.sql and we see we have two SQL plus commands in this file show user and select name from v$ database so now when I go into SQL plus like so I can, I can use the at sign and reference the script okay and the at sign tells SQL plus that you would like it to reference this file on the in the operating system on disk and execute whatever is in this file so you're saying so the at sign is saying whatever comes after the at sign that's going to be the fully qualified path name to a file i would like you to open and execute whatever's in it bam you see how you get the out you get the output from show user and you get the output from select name from v dollar sign database because that's what it did. And now instead of executing those two commands every day, you just have to execute this one command every day. And to edit that code or to change what you execute every day when you call that script, you would just open up uh, that's that file again with Notepad and make your SQL changes. But the point is you only have to make those changes once.
Now, another way to execute a script um, external to the database or, SQ, or external from SQL Plus is with the start command. And the start command is the equivalent to the at sign. So you can type in start space C colon slash script one like so. And that does the same thing that the at sign does. Okay, so you could either use um, the at sign character or you could use the start command. Either one works. Okay, now you'll notice how I didn't say script one that SQL, I just said script one. That is because SQL plus X, um, implicitly um, appends a .sql file extension to the file. Okay, so let me show you what that let me show you what that means. Okay, you'll notice that our file name is actually called script1.sql, but we only reference with the start and the at sign c colon slash script1. We omit the .sql. Okay, but we don't have to, but we do that because we know SQL Plus will automatically include a .sql implicitly. So that means let's do a little experiment here. If we were to uh, rename the script1.sql file to script1.ext, dir script1.ext, and it doesn't matter what you rename it to as long as it doesn't say .sql. Okay, we know that file doesn't have a does not have a .sql extension now. So now we go to SQL Plus, and now we do an at sign c colon slash script1. Okay, and it's gonna and it's now going to say that it cannot open that file and and uh, notice what it's notice no, notice what it says it says unable to open file c colon slash script one that sql notice how it in how it puts a dot sql that's how you that that's how you can tell what sql plus is doing um under the covers it's implicitly um appended dot the dot sql file extension to c colon slash script one and it can't find that okay because we um, have a .ext there. So to correct that, <coughs> let's say you wanted to keep the .ext file extension on the script one file. Okay, you couldn't rename it. What you could do is you could explicitly include the non.sql extension like that, and it would work. Okay. Now, uh, you're probably thinking, well, if you include the extension .ext, wouldn't it just be script1.ext.sql? Wouldn't SQL plus still append .sql to it? No, SQL plus is smart enough to know that when you say .ext, you're actually specifying the extension and it knows not to put a .sql at the end. It, it omits that. Okay, of course. Name our script one ext back to script that one that sql okay we do not have to fully specify this the extension again because that sql is done implicitly but we could however do that and it won't be dot sql dot sql again sql plus is smart enough to know that we're specifying the extension so this works as well. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The one, the uh, one final way to execute an external set of commands in batch mode in SQL Plus is to type in the following: SQL Plus space slash space as sysdba at c colon script one. And what this does is this will tell SQL Plus. I want you to start an SQL plus session and as soon as you at uh, the moment that you start up I want you to execute the commands that are in this script and as we can see that's exactly what it did before it gave us our prompt it executed what was in this script okay and there's the output to the show user command and the output to the select name from the dollar sign database command okay that is how you execute external uh, commands that are in a file uh, in SQL Plus. Thank you.